Hey guys, Dungeon Master Johnny here, and welcome to the Warhammer Quest 1995 How to Make the Tiles. So, I've made the entire set, as you guys have probably seen from some of my battle reports. They turned out really awesome. Uh, they are made on chipboard. I'm going to try to make the video quick and to the point, but um, the biggest part about these, they stay almost completely flat. Sometimes you'll get a little tiny bit of warping, um, and that's just from the glue um, lifting it up. But with this chipboard, it's so awesome. All you do is just give it a little bend like this. You don't want to crack the cardboard or anything, but you just give it a little bend like that and check it out. They are completely flat. Um, they lay on the table beautifully. They all fit together beautifully. And uh, without further ado, let's get into making these. First off, we're gonna need a few tools. It's preferred that you have a cutting mat. You can get these at Walmart. You're gonna need a metal ruler to make nice straight cuts with your razor blade. A X-Acto knife. This isn't necessary, but I still use it sometimes for like um, L-shaped sections. Uh, you'll need a nice new box cutter. Uh, with a sharp blade, you can break these off with uh, pliers. And you get a nice sharp blade right there. Um, a pencil, a glue stick. I tried when I was making these, cause you can make these tiles for Dungeons and Dragons or Warhammer Quest or whatever you wanna use. But over the years, I've tried every kind of glue. I've tried, everybody's like, use spray mount. And I didn't have that much luck with it. This right here is the best, Elmer's glue stick, all purpose. Um, and then you need uh, one of these fat markers and see that big fat tip on there. It makes your life so much easier. This can be done. Um, the edging can be done with a regular permanent marker, but this just makes it so much easier. And this is from Curate Color Jumbo Poster Marker. So look for poster markers that are permanent. The most important part of the project is chipboard. My favorite kind is chip decor. I had got this at Hobby Lobby. Well, when I went back in there uh, this time for this project, they seemed to be out of it and they acted like they didn't know what I was talking about. So I don't know if they're going to be carrying it anymore or not. Um, this is a piece of it. This right here is what Hobby Lobby currently has. It's really thin and I haven't quite used this yet. I will update in another video about this stuff right here, but this works and this is what you wanna stick with. So you might be wondering, well, if they don't sell anymore, what do I use? There is a YouTube channel called Wylock's Armory and he uses chipboard. And so I looked at all the dimensions um, and the type of chipboard that it is and his, he uses graphics chipboard. I'll put a link down in the description cause I just ordered some of that. The most important part is not necessarily the size, like these comes in um, these come in 12 by 12 uh, squares, but it's the actual thickness and you want the 1.5 millimeter. That's um, the most important part. As I showed you in the beginning of the video, um, it's durable enough to where when it does have just a little bit of warping, you can just bend it like this. It's so cool, it just stays like that. It just, it lays super flat right on the table and uh, you're in good shape to go. And as I said, these can be used for Dungeons and Dragons or Warhammer Quest. Um, you can do Google searches and find tiles and then now you can make your own. All right, so let's get to the project. While we're talking about equipment needed, um, you're also gonna need cardstock. I. I've used this for years to print out all my tiles on. It was 150 sheets, it's 110 pound, and it's a brightness of 94. You get this at Walmart, I think it's like $10 a package and there's 150 sheets in it. And it's basically just like really thick printer paper. So what I'm currently doing is I have all the original tiles uh, printed up and finished. That's what I've been using for my past battle reports. But on the Facebook group, 
Um, they have these modernized tiles. A guy on the Facebook group um, has modernized all the tiles. Um, this is based on one of the video games, I believe, and he was kind enough to share it with everybody. I'm not saying his name on here right now because I don't know if he wants that kind of attention. But um, yeah, you can go and join our Facebook group and you can find these. These are the modernized um, versions of the tiles. So that's what I'm working on currently. So here I have uh, the stairway. And... Uh, all I'm gonna do really quickly is just, you know, I was gonna spare everybody this process, but some people like seeing every single step of the way. And so for the sake of completeness, I just figured I'd include the cutting out of the stairway. Just grab yourself a pair of nice sharp scissors. The longer scissors, the better, because they cover more distance. And just cut the stairway out. Done. That took about two seconds. Um, it's cool because they also come with the new cards um, and I have to cut all of these out and make new cards. Um, one thing just as a conversational piece on why I'm doing this, and you might think, well, you already have the tiles or, you know, you can use one. What's cool is to combine. I'm going to combine the sets. So I might have, you know, an old school, I might have an old school hallway that leads into a new um, modern room like this and you just get a lot of different variations um, for the look of your dungeons so that's super cool so for the next step we grab our piece of chipboard we grab our cutout and it may seem obvious but you want to make as less as few cuts as possible so we have two um, really straight lines right here so that's what we're going to be going for this doesn't have to be perfect they uh you know, as I said, they only fit together in certain ways. So you're gonna be just fine. Uh, we just copy this. We take our metal ruler, and line it up. Just try to get it about as good as you can here. And you wanna make sure that this guy doesn't move. And we're just gonna make a series of cuts. Don't try to cut all the way through on the first one for speed. Just make a few of them, four or five or whatever, and we're already cut through. So perfectly straight line right there. Next, uh, we'll just turn it around, hit this side. Again, several shallow cuts just like that be extra careful i sometimes wear these giant kitchen mitts um, just for safety next grab your marker now is a good time to do the edging not when it's put together so all we're doing for edging is you can see the little um white edges around here we're just taking our marker very quickly and doing that. Now the edges are all black. I used to do it when they were already put together and built, but it was a lot, it was a lot harder. Um, you'd have to go back over and press really hard with the marker and try to get into the cardboard. Um, this is done right here. Um, and then now we just, you can see we black out that edge, black out this edge. So much easier. Do it right now. Okay, so we hit all four edges, but one thing a lot of people don't do, this. Because if your piece of paper happens to be a little short on one side, well, this is going to cover you. You don't want any cardboard showing on any of the edges and that's gonna take care of it. So next step, grab your glue stick. I use like a piece of cardboard right here. Um, sometimes I'll use a paper plate, but I really like the cardboard best because when the glue gets on it, it just almost automatically dries like any glue over the edges. Uh, so you're just gonna take your glue stick and you're gonna start covering this thing. I'll make sure you get all the way down to the edges do the middle and then go around the edges one more time. 
just like that. Take this, line up the corner, just like that. Bring it down, you can see this, this edge is way over, so I just move it, I just slide the whole thing that way till it gets nice and lined up. You get a little bit of glue onto here like I just did, it doesn't even matter, it just comes right off just by rubbing it, just like that. Make sure all your corners are pushed down and then I use the edges right here to sort of smooth this guy out. We wanna cap up our glue. Don't let that sit for too long. Make sure to get any glue off your fingers like this. Now you can just, you can feel little bits here and there. Everything's coming off perfectly just by doing this like little bits of um, maybe glue that carried over onto here. It all just rubs right off, is what I was trying to say. But we have a beautiful tile. Look at that, the edges are done. If your edges happen to come up a little bit because you didn't get enough glue on there, all you do is just pull it back, take a little bit of glue on your finger, put it down in there and push it back. It's so simple, so easy. Um, Look at where I did the gluing on here. There's nothing. I could use this for something if I have to. Uh, the glue just sort of melts and fades right into this piece of cardboard. So yeah, check it out, guys. There's our modernized stairway tile. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and but most importantly, even if you don't hit the like button, leave a comment. It's nice to know that people enjoy this stuff. If you've been watching the videos, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I hope you're having fun. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.